There are six relay towers in Fallout 4. Each relay tower has different signals that tell different stories. I'm gonna go through each one in its own video. We will do three of the relay towers today, so I'll have three videos for you today. This is the first one. This is the full story of Relay Tower 1DL109. You find this relay tower just southwest of Oberlan Station. We find a destroyed construction protectron lying on an oil slick at the relay station. Access the nearby terminal to extend the satellite dishes, which will restore the signals. The first signal is Garbled Radio Beacon. You only get this one if you're over level 20. As you follow the Garbled Radio Beacon due east, it becomes more clear. You come upon an alien aircraft crash site. You can follow Green Blood Splatter, which leads you to a cave where you encounter the alien. Turning off the ham radio in this cave will turn off the garbled radio beacon. If you happen to miss the random encounter where you see the spaceship fly overhead, you can always go to the relay tower and follow the garbled radio beacon to find the alien. Strangely enough, his wreck will not be there even if you are over level 20 unless you either see the spaceship land or activate the garbled beacon. At least that's the way it was in three different playthroughs of mine. If you'd like to learn more about this UFO, I did an entire video dedicated to this topic which you can watch here. And next is the distress signal. Now, this signal becomes more clear as you walk south along the train tracks near the relay tower. If anyone can hear this, my son and I are trapped and need help. Chased by oh, something, but we're able to escape into this train car. It knows we're in here, though. Thomas is hurt. It needs. Oh no! It got the door open. Brad Thomas, get out! This has been a pre-recorded message. Message repeats in three seconds. We find a hatch in the roof of one of the blue overturned train cars. Inside is a sad scene. Next to the ham radio, which is set to loop, we find the skeleton of a woman, and there is blood splattered all over the ground. The only evidence we have of the sun is a teddy bear lying on the ground. I left the train car to try and find any evidence of the sun, any evidence that he made it. I stumbled upon two feral ghouls, one of whom was legendary, which are likely the ghouls that killed the poor mother. Given that they are not inside the train car, they likely chased the sun as he fled. The other train cars on the tracks don't have anything interesting in them. You can follow the tracks south to explore an overpass and some wrecked cars in the tunnel underneath. There's a switching tower nearby, and if you climb up top, you find a hatch that leads to a way station. Sadly, inside there isn't anything dealing with the sun. Instead, we find what appears to be a surgery center. But something has clearly gone horribly wrong. The body of a female settler lies on the table. On the ground next to her is a big blue plastic crate filled with human body parts, lower jaws, and skull fragments. There's a nearby table with a sledgehammer, a machete, a bowie knife, and other their cutting implements. At first I thought this was perhaps another amateur face surgeon like Doc Crocker performing facial reconstruction surgery, but then I noticed the battery on the ground with wires connected to it, stretching to the corpse of the female settler. Why would they be shocking this poor woman? Perhaps it had nothing to do with surgery and instead was pure torture. I never did find any other information on the fate of the son. The final beacon is the Boston City Works beacon, which takes us due west of the relay tower. Here we find a lock. A group of three mongrels attacks us. After they are dispatched with, we find the corpses of two raiders lying here. These are likely victims of the mongrels. As we walk across the lock, the beacon gets more clear. Okay, looks like a reactive malfunction in sub-level D. System locked the gates down, again. I guess I'm gonna need a manual override. Look, Spiegel, I know you've got pressing matters like reading that latest copy of La Coiffe to a but when you find time, let me out, okay? Meanwhile, I 
Guess I'll loop this thing and have a smoke. Try what you're doing up there, you lazy skeezer. This has been a pre-recorded message. Message repeats in three seconds. There's a door on the left-hand side that leads to the lock operations. Inside, we find a desk and lots of storage. There's an explosives crate against the wall. Nothing terribly interesting until you look in the far back and you find a hatch on the ground, which leads to the reactor level. The reactor level is partially caved in. Here we do find the nuclear reactors, which look like they're still working. They give off a lot of rads. And in the adjacent room on a desktop, we find the ham radio. Switching it off turns off the beacon. I didn't find any corpses in here, so this might be some good news. It looks like Spiegel came back and released the man who had gotten trapped down here. I didn't find his skeleton. Exploring the rest of the lock doesn't reveal anything terribly interesting. There's a warehouse on the other side with minor loot inside. You can go up a ramp to the top of a destroyed building to overlook a submerged town. This is Forest Grove Marsh. We'll save this place for another video another day. Heading down into the lock, we find a ship that's been stranded. There's nothing terribly important on the ship. If you get out of your power armor and swim around, you can find a bunch of shipping containers. And at last, we do finally find a skeleton underwater, squeezed between the shipping containers, holding a ProSnap camera. Could this be Spiegel? Or could this be the guy that at one point was stuck in sublevel D? I guess we'll never know. And that's the full story of Relay Tower 1DL109. As I said earlier, this is only the first of six of these Relay Towers, and I will be going through each each of them. I've got two more of these scheduled for today, so be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you get notified when I publish my next video on the next Relay Tower. Thanks for watching, everybody.